All right, hopefully you guys get a good look at those headlights because that's the last time you're gonna see them stock and chromed out because for today's video, we're gonna go ahead and make them black. So if this video has any interest in you, go ahead and stay tuned and we're gonna go ahead and do this process together. I think it's time to invest in a better jack. <laughs> Man, it takes me forever. Now that that's all done, let's go ahead and pop this bumper off and then I'll catch you guys up once that bumper's gone. And before we go any farther forward, I wanna say thank you to the sponsor, United States Marine Corps. They actually gave me a sick pair of coveralls to wear so I don't have to get it dirty. Thank you, Marine Corps. Side note, not actually sponsored. So for the tools I'm gonna to be using, I'm gonna use a basic little ratchet. I'm gonna use a 10 millimeter socket. This is to get the bumpers off. Bolt up there, I'll show you in a second. Flat heads and a Phillips head, and you guys should be good. I do wanna throw this out there too. Don't expect this job to be something quick and easy. It's gonna be very minute, very time consuming, but well worth it in the end. So I'm not gonna get this all done in one day. So tonight I'm gonna to remove the bumper, remove the headlights, crack them open, and then paint them overnight, let them dry, and then reinstall tomorrow. So that's the goal for today. Let's see if we can accomplish that. All right, so I figured it out on the left-hand headlight. So, pretty easy like I thought it was. One bolt here, so one, two, three, and then on the side, not the top one, but this one, four, it holds this little bracket in up here. And as you remove this, this one right here, there's actually a little trick I'm gonna have to show you while I do it. I'm gonna show you that little trick that I have to show you here. So if you zoom in, there's a little clip in here that you have to get like a flat head, that's what I used. A flat head underneath, and it pops it. You'll hear a little audible pop, and that clears this so you can, it, you're able to pull out this headlight. Slide out ever so slightly, and then you can get back here to the wiring harness. Which this side is a little more difficult just because your coolant's here and all these lines, but you should still be able to get it. And then, Voila, one headlight, right side. All right, got the headlights and the bumper off. And it's before it's dark, so we hit our goal. You see the sunlight still out there. Awesome. So before I go ahead and dismantle this thing, I gotta take off my film. That's pretty much back to stock, so once I remove this, I'm all in, I guess. Let's see the difference of this stuff. Ouch. Twenty-two minutes, ready, set, go. Safety first. <laughs> assembled and that's what it's basically gonna look like so as you can see I kept the reflector available that way it's still kind of legal looking all right got my baby nice and assembled so we're gonna go ahead and throw it back on the car stock side on here side we just worked on blacked out that portion and what you're gonna want to do is go against the wall I'm here in the garage door and we're gonna go ahead and shine the light, basically ripped apart the whole headlight, so things may be unbalanced. So we're gonna go ahead and check that. If it's good, then we're good. 
No, looks pretty even, so we're good. And I don't know if you can tell on the camera, but that is definitely a lot brighter than that side. And that side's because it still has the tinted film on there. I wanted to see the difference. High beam looks good. We'll also do our hazards. Make sure everything works properly. Yeah, and we're golden. Looks good. And I like how that gloss black, like look at that. It bounces off the light right there. Looks pretty sick. The other side doesn't do that. Just a heads up, not all of the 08 and above Lancers and Evos have the uh, projectors. So if you have the headlight SSS uh, package, you guys should be good. It's the buy neon projectors, which means you can output for uh, high and low beam in that one projector. So blacking out the reflectors isn't bad for your car. However, if you guys don't have those, I'd wouldn't recommend doing this project. So if you do have the uh, <clears throat> SSS package, uh, go ahead and go for it because this thing is turning out pretty sick. So, and on a side note, the only uh, lights that would probably be affected are the daylight, daylight running lights, or daytime running lights, and that's because uh, of those reflectors. But on the same time, it's not gonna look too bad because a dimmer version of those day, daytime running lights probably look better. All right, good morning guys. Today is day two. We already did the left hand side of the headlights and today we're gonna go ahead and do the right hand side. Let me go ahead and show you guys a daytime perspective of both of them. So there you go. One's blacked out, one's still chrome with a tint on there. So that's not the stock clear lens right now. What it currently looks like, not too bad. Then of course you got this side. But since I already did my other headlight, this one should be a lot easier since I already know what I'm doing, what tools I'm gonna to be needing, and all of that. Got one headlight in hand, so we're gonna go ahead and head inside. That way we can kind of control our screws and everything a little better than out here. I do have to get my little tinted film off of here that I have. <laughs> Okay, brought it back inside. As you guys can tell, I do have it on a little floor mat. It's clean, don't worry, we just wash this thing. But we have it on here, that way when you flip it over, you're not gonna be scratching your headlight. So that's kind of an important piece too that you might overlook if you're too busy trying to do everything. So take the time, protect this thing so you don't get scratches on the lens. Let the fun begin because you're gonna be basically breaking down this whole headlight like every little last piece so let's go ahead and get down to it first matter of business you got to remove all the electrical harnesses all the bulbs and then you're also gonna have to remove the ballast so in order to get all of those you're gonna either do it by hand with all the harnesses and then you're also gonna need a phillips head so let's go ahead and get down to it all right here's your ballast it's just three phillips head screws two Three, and then you can disconnect from here. So, when you open this, this is what you guys gotta get inside, all right? So, what you could do is basically peel back the little plastic piece. Like so, and there's gonna be a connector in here that you have to disengage And then, there you go, your ballast comes off. So you wanna set your ballast and your three screws over to the side. Keep everything together, all right? And then once you have this connector out, you're just gonna, you're just gonna push that guy in there, just like that. And then there you go, ballast is disconnected. Flipping it over on this side so you can see. All right, so here's one screw that you're gonna wanna remove. It's located right down here behind this harness. It's gonna, you don't notice it has like a little rubber washer. So go ahead and remove that guy. It gives you access to pull all the, all the harnesses out because that kind of holds it in place. So like, like so. There's gonna be a bracket up here. Pulls these two connectors in place. So here's one. So, okay, yeah, just one screw. So this is an alignment bracket. So I don't know if you can see, but there's little holes that little studs go through so it knows where to sit. 
I'll hold the housing together, it's gonna be four screws. So four black screws, one, two, three, and four. So you're gonna remove those four screws, and then you're also gonna find this tab, there's only one. So you're gonna remove that metal tab, you just get a little flathead underneath it, and get that off, so we'll go ahead and do that now. All right, what's all previously stated is off. All the clips and screws surrounding the perimeter is off. You're good to throw this thing in the oven. So what I've been doing is, yesterday yesterday I did 22 minutes in the oven at 200 degrees. Um, it was still a little tricky to get off, so I'm probably gonna go more for 25 minutes today, see what happens. So I'm gonna go ahead and heat up the oven, preheat it to 200 degrees, which you could probably preheat it while you're moving this. That way it took about five minutes total, now that I know what I'm doing. So preheat the oven to 200 degrees and then throw it in there for 25 minutes. Once that's done, I'll go ahead and meet back up with you guys and we'll split this bad boy open. I don't think my oven's ever been this low besides what we're doing now. 200 and start. While the oven's getting preheated, it's probably a good time to go ahead and take care of other little things. So like how I mentioned that you don't want to lose screws and everything. So I'm going to go ahead and grab some Ziploc bags. I'm gonna put it in with that part it belongs to, that way things don't get mixed matched and then you end up playing a big puzzle game like I did last night. There you go, success starts in the oven. That means we're done. That was 24 minutes, I'm gonna get my helper to hold this real quick. All right. There you go, turn off the annoying beep. And turn off the oven. You don't need to catch your house on fire. So all we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and pry open where all these clips are. Be careful because this is hot, right? It just came out of the oven. So the best way to do that is you just want to make sure that you can pry the plastic away from there. That means the adhesive is pretty much good all the way around. Don't press too much or you'll break a clip. Alright, so that all looks good. Good, so I think 24 minutes at 200 degrees is the magic number. It does look easiest to stand it up. There's a little there's a little grip right here you can kind of grab and kind of separate. Ow, that was metal. <laughs> That's hot. So what you want to do, you might want to take a flathead to go ahead and get it started. Just pry open anywhere where you can deem fit. Just engage the clips. <laughs> There you go, one headlight housing open. So in order to get to that housing, it looks like we have three screws. One, two, and three. Those are all Phillips heads, so let's go ahead and screw those. And just as I removed that last one, I just saw this guy hiding right there. So there's actually four screws. As soon as I get that off, we'll be free. All right, once you got that black trim taken off, it's, this is basically up to you guys on what you want to black out. I'm going to be blacking out all three portions, so let's start off with this first one. Looks like one and uh, two screws. And yep, I was correct. It was just those two screws holding that in. Set that one to the side. On to the next. All right, to get access to this one, we're going to have to remove that. Because if you pull up and just slide to this to the side, Feel like there's screws everywhere. And at this time, you want to kind of get clear of all the clutter. So I got the bulbs in here, ballast in its pieces, a Ziploc bag, and I also got the two little fasteners from all the wiring harnesses in the bag. And I got the outside clips in a bag. And these are going to go away that way nothing gets confused with different parts later on. And we just removed this ballast, or this little housing for the projector. On the inside right here, it's going to be able to sit just like this, and that controls your high and low beam. So when you turn your high beam on, you might hear the... That's what this is doing, opening and closing, so it can show you the projector more or less. So there's that. And then there's this guy too as well that will come off. So, kind of important to remember where these go. So there's all those pieces put to the side, and here we go, diving in a little deeper now. So we got one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven screws. 
So once we remove that, basically the how that little all that chrome should come off, and then we're ready to paint. Screws removed, all seven, I believe it was, and uh, there you go. So this kind of just disconnects from everything else. There's your projector. Highly important, you do not scratch that. So lay that uh, face up somewhere where nobody's gonna mess with it. But um, yeah, so here's your chrome pieces without the projector. So they can all come off. So your side marker that I'm not gonna be uh, painting. But however, I will remove this guy right here. All it is is two little clips on the inside that you pop to the side with a flathead. But here's how the reflector would sit in there. And if you look towards the top, there's two little clips, one, two, and they sit right up in here. All you gotta do is legit just push those clips down. You don't gotta tilt them anyway. Just push them straight down with something you can fit through there. And then uh, this pops out. Just blows my mind the difference of learning something and actually knowing what you're doing because this one was a lot easier and I was able to break it down a lot more. So I don't know if last night I was just tired or what, but today it was super easy. All right, probably the last time you're gonna see these guys chrome. All right, so we just got done cleaning them. They're all nice and clean. You wanna do that that way. You don't see any streaks, everything sticks to where it needs to stick and you're not getting like little pieces of hair or something which is gonna bug you and then you have to go through this whole process again just to fix it so take your time clean them well and then you're ready to spray paint all right so for the paint you can go ahead and use whatever you want but i was reading online people like to use the krylon this has paint and primer in there they said it sticks to plastic and everything like that so i'm gonna go ahead and work my chances with this it says no runs no drips and no errors, but last night it was running a little bit. I think it was just because I was a little too hasty on applying my coat, so I'm allowed more than 10 minutes each coat to go ahead and dry. I'll probably do about 20 minutes. Oh, um, two more to go. All right, our third and final base is done. Once that's complete, you guys want to go ahead and do a thorough overlook and make sure you guys didn't miss anything. I recommend bringing it into the light because you guys really don't want to disassemble this whole headlight housing or reassemble the whole headlight housing just to see that, hey, you missed a spot or you see a discrepancy. So catch it now while everything's still out and then you should be good. I actually want to show you guys the behind the scenes quality assurance team for the Snides. And here they are. What's it look like? Looks good to me. Looks good. Did I miss anything? Alright, so we're good? Alright. Thumbs up. We good? High five. High five? Yeah. yeah. Alright, we're good. So, insert time lapse of install. Once you have everything assembled, all the clips back on, all the fasteners, housing put back together, you're gonna go ahead and put it in the oven for 200 degrees for five minutes. Not 24 this time, it's just a matter of getting the adhesive together. That way it melts a good ice and seal. That way condensation and all that stuff doesn't get in there. So oven's preheated at 200 degrees, gonna throw it in for five minutes. Word of advice, don't forget it's in there because you really don't wanna mess up these headlights and buy new ones, they're expensive. Mods are served. Voila, all done, nice and clean.
Looking good. And just so you guys know, that little tinted fill I had on here did a perfectly good job at like keeping all the rock and debris that would hit the headlight. Kept this thing nice and clean. So, kind of impressed with that. And just so you know, it may seem like a waste of time, but this is just such a brilliant idea. <laughs> Whoever came up with that in the first place, because we have to do this at work, it's actually pretty smart and dummy proof, because now I know what pieces go where. All right, time to fight the jungle of cables in a tight area. And then, put the bumper on, drop the car, and I'll review to you guys what the new front of this car looks like. All right. As you guys can tell, it's pretty even now. So what I had to do, it's got my ratchet in there, and I basically had to level the headlight down. So now it's all even. So I think we're all set. Time to actually bolt this thing up now. All right, to kind of explain in depth on what I actually had to do to adjust that light, let me go ahead and show you. So I did have to remove this little wiper wiper fluid, so just that little 10 millimeter. Move that out of the way and it gives you access behind here so you can move that little piece. So if you follow this, it's basically gonna line up right underneath here and you just take your eight millimeter and you can adjust it and then when you adjust it left to right, that's when it goes up and down. So that's what I had to do. All right, final product. I'm super stoked and happy about this thing. Let me go ahead and show you guys. Car is dirty. But um, that looks really good. Looks better in person. You can see it better without a glare and everything, but there you go. Let me know what you guys think down below. You think it's worth doing? I think it is, because I like these headlights. I wanted to keep them. The only other style I would probably go with are the Audi ones, but I don't know. These are just as sick, I think. Once you black them out. Mm -hmm.